This Week in Tucson Foodie. I love thee for your pies. Apologize. Open it up. Whoa. A news show no one asked for. This Week in Tucson Foodie. Welcome to another This Week in Tucson Foodie. I'm Fun Fun Ye. And I'm Shane Reeser. When devastating wildfires come between a man and his wife, a journey to the most biodiverse desert in the world begins. Coming up, we find out why Sonoma County winemaker Tony Cattori is bringing his natural Italian wines to Tucson. After that, Ari Shapiro, owner of Flora, Sidecar, and Hute Burger, joins us for our first Tucson foodie sports segment called Slack Dining. Stick around to see if Ari can correctly identify a mystery meal from a locally restaurant while keeping his balance on a slack line blindfolded. I know, I prefer to read slack blindfolded. After last week's pilot episode, our guest Alex faced backlash after calling Tucson City of Gastronomy the city of gastrology and responded with this viral apology video. Uh, so i like to take this opportunity to apologize to the endoscope city of astronomy uh i know like i'm an aries so it's pretty difficult for me to communicate those kinds of things but uh yeah super super sorry wow i can't believe alex that up again Chef Jonathan Landing of Jonathan's Cork and his partner and wife, Colette, have retired after 40 years of delighting Tucson palates with their signature dishes of escargot, prime beef, game meats including venison, bison, and ostrich, and outstanding seafood entrees. But instead of putting a cork in it, they passed the legacy of fantastic food from Tucson's last standing restaurant row establishments to new owners Glenn and Sally Murphy. Tucson is getting an extra hand this April. Two Pans, the Korean corn dog chain, will be adding a third location on the corner of Broadway and Craycroft. Get your favorite handheld meat treats like potato dog that's wrapped with potato cubes and topped with their signature dirty sauce, and the spicy dog, which is a combination of their spicy sauce and hot Cheetos powder without the orange fingerprints. Mm, gotta love some handheld meat treats. Transit Tea is now open earlier five days a week. Get your favorite craft teas, including some new additions like matcha shots, moxie energy drink elixirs, and adaptogen blend teas starting at 7 a.m. instead of 9 a.m. Monday through Friday. Backyard Food Trucks, a new food truck park with the self-proclaimed seven wonders of the world, seven of Tucson's best trucks at one location, is opening on the north side of town. Yes, we said north side. You mean Phoenix? North Tucson? Yeah. March 29th is National PETA Day. All day long, PETA Jungle will be donating $1 for every PETA sold to Arizona nonprofit Waste Not. Funds will support the elimination of food waste and hunger through Waste Not's food rescue efforts. Why not eat to help create sustainable food systems that help people and the planet flourish? What do you want from me? Here, let me help you open your mind up. Take a peek. What is what that? Is that? Wait, Wait, is that the new Barrio Bread Sonoran bagel that's dropping soon? No, I put all of our bad jokes and all our bad deliveries on the bagel. Yeah, no! <laughs> you know, Blue Friend has a new brunch menu. Well, yeah. Served every weekend from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. They have a vast menu that offers something for everyone with the addition of in-house waffles and English muffins, fresh juices, fermentation, and of course, what is the what crap cocktails? <laughs> Speaking of Blue Front, did you know Blue Front is just one of the food businesses that have multiple job openings? I mean, after the response from last week's first This Week in Tucson Foodie, I think we both should get familiar with available jobs in food. Several places are looking for baristas and line cooks, and someone's dream job is waiting for them. The Tucson City of Gastronomy is looking for a program manager. Ah, if I were to do it again, I'd lay all my efforts in poetry. How do I love thee, Anello? Let me count the ways. I love thee for your pies. I love thee for your vibes. 
I love thee for your commitment to local ingredients. I love your aesthetic, which I call Japanese disobedience. I love thee for your wine. I love thee for your sign, or lack thereof, really. I love thee for your vegetables. I love your menu, so legible, so accessible. I love your modicity, I love your simplicity. I love thee for your wood ceilings. I love thee for that warm, fuzzy feeling I get when I stop by for a sweet, delicious pie. Wow, Shane. Thanks. You're welcome. And now we'd like to shout out to the foodie of the week. Foodie of the week. <laughs> Since Alex got canceled, we're doing There's Nothing to Do in Tucson with a playful game of impression reading. I'll show you the character, you do the impression, okay? Okay. And now for There's Nothing Happening in Tucson. The Godfather. Tucson, the traveling leisure's number six best food city in the U.S. Little cities like Los Angeles and Phoenix on the f***ing dust. That's all the reason to get excited about all the food happenings in the Tucson city of pastrami. It's gastronomy. Oh, yeah. I end up like Alex, do you? Uh, give me a f***ing word <laughs> over here. All right, next one. Christopher Walken. Okay. I'm going to need a second on that one. Folks, guys, all right, so Penelope Woodfired is back at it again uh, with a pop up this April 4th. Uh, Chef, Chef Jared Schwartz and Chef Morgan will be serving a handmade pasta with mezcal sauce, their take on vodka sauce, uh, a lemon olive oil cake served with Okashi ice cream. These lines go out the door for these souls. Make sure you get there early to secure your favorite dishes. I got a fever. <laughs> All right. Okay, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> a mezcal tasting benefiting Borderlands Restoration Network is happening March 30th at Crystal Bar. Learning about mezcal while supporting BRN's mission to rebuild healthy ecosystems, restore habitat for plants and wildlife, and reconnect our border communities to the land. <laughs> Through shared learning, tasting flights are $30 per person. Terrible. So bad. <clears throat> so bad. <laughs> no bathroom around and you need to go. On March 31st, the Savoy Opera House at Trail Dust Town is producing a murder mystery dinner performed by the villainous, world-famous Murder, Inc. Productions. $65 includes dinner in the show. It will be the rudest, rudest, tootinest, best time you're at. Okay, Jennifer Coolidge. God. <laughs> God. You could win $1,000 in credit at Flower Child's grand opening celebration this April 4th. Tucson native San Fox's healthy food for a happy world restaurant concept. We'll celebrate with a variety of local partnerships and activations, like give back to and giveaways. Cookie Monster meets Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Put the cookie down! Music, food, and weed are the main ingredients ah! for Harm the Desert, a four-tool festival produced in partnership with Tucson Foodie, Tucson Tulby, and Blank Media. There will be free swag smoking in designated areas only. Food to satisfy your manchies. And live hip-hop and reggae performances. Stay high and say hi this April 20th at the MSA Onyx. Ugh. Cookies! Well, that was fun. <laughs> the UN just put out a report urging us to take swift action to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Climate-driven food and water insecurity is expected to grow with increased global warming. With so much at stake, how will most of us deal with this? For me, a glass of wine to start. But even a glass of wine is at risk. 
We talked to Tony Katori, a pioneer in natural winemaking, about the future of wines in a time of climate change. Hi, I'm here at Five Points Market and Cafe. Tony, you're a pioneer in natural winemaking. Can you tell us more about that? I'd love to say that it's natural winemaking, but I consider it traditional winemaking. It, it's been made this way for, for many, many centuries. And we're on the what's considered the extreme part of the spectrum in that we add absolutely nothing to the wines, no sulfites, no yeast, nothing. Even within the natural wine world, the natural wine community, they are additives that are allowed to use. So the actual term natural wine doesn't mean anything. I hope that it evolves to the point where people come to a bit of cultural area like Sonoma Valley and look for those winemakers that are producing wines in a way that they want to see. And I think that's the most important thing because there's the ethical part of how the vineyards are, are grown and obviously how the wine is made, but how the workers are being taken care of. What techniques are you using that are moving forward in progression in terms of cleaning up the environment? Last year, um, there was a heat bubble in our particular Appalachian, Sonoma Mountain. It was 119 degrees the second week of September for five days. So, I mean, it was interesting after 44 years of doing this, I mean, we just picked all the grapes. And what we're seeing now, four years of intense drought, and then one year with so much rain that it's inconceivable. And the, the real issue is the trees are uptaking so much water because it's available to them, they're literally falling over. I've been in the spot that I'm in right now since 1961, and people say, oh, it must be really hard to emotionally change or move away. It's not the same place anymore. The huge issue that's still hanging over everything, even though We've got this tremendous amount of rain this year is fires. Fires are changing the whole environment and you can't live in a place where the chance of being burnt out is a constant threat. Given those kind of changes, it's time to move to a different place, learn a new uh, ecology. And I think that's, to me, it's really exciting. The favorite thing about Tucson is the dryness and, and the warmth. I mean, there's no question about it. I mean, I'm starting the network. I've only been here for a little less than a year. I'm starting to get out into the community and meet the people that can make the dream come true. These wines are incredible and what a fascinating story, Fun Fun. Uh, I wish everybody would take a moment to just think about how even wine could be impacted by climate change. If you want to support Tony and the natural wine movement here in Tucson, check out the wine tasting that Tony holds every month at Five Points Market and Cafe. The next one is April 20th. Or try a glass with breakfast, lunch, or dinner while you're there. Balancing flavors is not just a task for chefs. In a sport he just invented, Ari Shapiro attempts to correctly identify dishes as he precariously balances on a slack line while blindfolded. Let's head to Shane, who's reporting live on this new sport from his patio. Shane? Shane here with Tucson Foodie Sports. We've invented a new sport called slack dining, and our first competitor is Ari Shapiro. Ari, what are we gonna be doing today? Well, I'm gonna to attempt to balance on this here slack line without the benefit of sight, as you'll soon see, and through whatever taste buds I have left, try and identify what you're feeding me. All right, let's see if he stays on the line. Seems like I got a utensil. Sort of tastes like sprouts in there. It's very delicious. Definitely got some lettuce. I mean, it tastes kind of like a salad. Ding, ding, ding. I got it? Yeah. I haven't really gotten any protein yet. Mmm, there we go. Kind of like a iceberg romaine, very crispy. I think it's from Choice Greens. Mm. Is it from a place that specializes in salads? Uh, not necessarily, no. 100% vegan restaurant. Oh, it is? Is it urban fresh? No. Is it Tamerico? No. Yeah. Oh, is it from uh, Midtown? Yes. Oh, ding, ding, you know ding, what's ding. really cool? <laughs> this is the first thing I've eaten from there. So is it a Caesar? It is. Wow. Hey.
All right, so this feels different than the thing that I just ate. This is warm. Let's first identify the utensil. It's a fork. All right, I don't know how big this bite's gonna be. I feel like I tasted some kind of like tortilla or something. Is this some sort of like enchilada? Okay, wait, got it. Is it a pasta? Hey. Ding, ding, All right, ding, ding, pasta, ding. wow, okay. <laughs> Is this some sort of vegan lasagna? Close. It's very, okay, yeah, I'm getting like a little bit of like a red sauce. Yes. Is it like a ziti? A rigatoni, okay. Is this from Ceres? No. Is this from a place that specializes in pasta? Kind of. It's an Italian restaurant. Is it from Renee's? No. Wow. Uh, Zona? No. Is it, is it, it's not locale, is it? No. Nope. Look, I don't work for Tucson Foodie. I'm just the guy slacklining without vision. Um, and you want us to tell you? Sure. <laughs> it's Zio Pepe. Oh, and Zio Pepe. And it's a pasta yep. arrabbiata. Okay. All right, warm and tall is like some sort of soup, maybe. Oh wow, chopsticks. How do you even know I can eat with chopsticks? <laughs> this is crazy. Nope. <laughs> Definitely some kind of noodle. Mmm, all right. Is it a ramen? It yeah. is. It is? Is this from Rajin Rajin Ramen? No. Does this place make their own ramen? They do not make their own noodles in-house. So is it noodle-aholics? No. Um, in town, it's from the south side of town. Are they purely it's, a ramen place? No, not at all. Is this from El Torero? No. Great, great guess, but no. Oh, is it from Tanya's? Nope. Parking, parking is always really difficult at this place. It's mm. named after a region of Mexico. It's a food truck that's permanently parked next to a building where you can eat at tables outside. No. Yeah, I don't know. And it's Ensenada Street Food. Don't know them, but oh, I would eat Ensenada there again. Ensenada Street Food. But I give amazing. them high marks, and they do a really good vegan ramen. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I was eating. All right, well, it's so cool to like see the food because I had, like, I was off on so much. Like, I thought this was so much smaller. It's so weird to eat blindfolded. Yeah. That's it, folks. See you next week. 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 That's it.